Last episode, we found the killer. This is the guy. He's admitted to it, everything. All of the evidence we found throughout the game is overwhelming. We've got this guy. But we've been able to back out the conversation. I'm just going to have a little look around to see if there's anything here before we decide to take this guy in. I can't actually go down that way. Let me have a look. Nope. Oh, there might actually be nothing here. There's not, there's just this, this little outcrop. Come on then, let's take him in. You're going down, son. We've, we've covered everything here. Isef Lil Lilianovich, draw. You're under arrest for the murder of the Colonel, Colonel here in Martinez. What? The old man's eyes fill with a sudden unexpected terror at the words. But you said I would be taken to the... This terror is the sum of all of the uncontrollable movements and mood swings he's been exhibiting. The wind picks up, the silence on the water is broken all around you. Little shivers of waves appear. The lieutenant continues, like an incantation. Your wayfarer rights have been suspended. Information provided to the officers on the scene will be used against you by the prosecution. You will be given legal counsel within one week and must face court in 44 days. Do you understand? Do you understand? But... Kim... He's afraid. No, I don't want to. I have to stay here. He looks at the reeds, eyes submerged in grown terror. He's sweating. Beads are forming on his forehead. Pupils are dilated too, eyes getting blacker and blacker. Your confirmation is not required, sir. The lieutenant turns to you. Now, onto the boat. 58% perception here in Legendary 14. We can't back out, can we? First say, does it have room for three? <laughs> Not really, he shakes his head. We could escort him to the pier, then either one of us can take him inland where the other stays here, but... There's something you're not getting here that he's realising, but what? The lieutenant shakes his head frustrated. Who watches over him there? While I come back for you. <laughs> it's the it's the dilemma. It's like a, it's a puzzle of how to get someone across. Maybe I can just ask that net picker to watch him. Oh look. I'm getting I'm getting positives here. Something with this, something is happening, stop. Come on then, let's go for it. There it is again. To your north, as it has been since you came to the coast, the reeds whisper, stalks rubbing against each other, but then, in the middle of it, what? Something completely different. It sounds like a bow, very slowly being drawn against the strings of a violin. A very small violin, made of reeds and rushes. And then it's gone, drowned out by, by a lieutenant's voice. Maybe there is room for three on the boat. Shh, Kim. Do you hear that? What? What are you talking about? Is this? The old man's voice drowns in a sudden gust of wind. Really us? Your skin crawls. Oh shit, look at that! Look! It's the phasmid! Oh my god, we fucking found it. I've been searching for you. Oh, it's actually creepy as fucking it. A delicate tangle of arms and legs unfolds from the reeds, limb by limb, to then just stand there, moving its scythe-like arms in ghostly silence. Blink. Check it's real. It's still there, an unfolding mechanism of reed like chitin hovering in place. Kim, I fucking told you. What is that? The 
old man looks at the reeds, then at you. What are you talking about? Or oh, maybe it's just me. The giant stick insect. He looks confused. There's nothing there. Insulin and phasmid. The stick insect is over three metres tall. It looks straight at you with tiny pinprick eyes in its grotesquely small head. It's so funny because there was no way we were trapping that in those, uh, those creature traps. You feel your legs shaking under you and your gun hand rise instinctively. There is. I see it. Kim, do you see it? Tell me what you see, damn it. I can't make out one small thing in the reeds. Kim, can you see it? I can see. Oh shit! Kim can see it? I figured it out. I know what's happening. I think this thing is a parasite. And this thing is leeching off this guy. That's why he's got these like weird twitches and things. That's why he's acting strange. I wonder if this made him do it. But that might be a bit of a far stretch. Four simple words. Thank God. If he can see, then you're not insane. It's really there. Spinning slowly. In absolute silence. It's limbs long and slender. Be very, very careful. The lieutenant whispers. Then takes a step forward to the giant anthropod. Oh, damn. Right. Hold on here. This is crazy. Creature stands on long, stilt-like legs, antenna hanging from its head like a woman's hair, white and curled at the tips. It's no more than five steps away from you. The segmented antenna move with apprehension, searching for something. You. Reed-like tufts stick out of its joints. As the insect moves its forearm, it produces a faint hiss, like a reel-to-reel -reel machine spinning after the tape breaks. The hiss is different from the strings you heard before. It says something else in a lower pitch. Listen carefully. You smell. Say something to it. Whisper, this is the insulin din phasmid. It is. The lieutenant whispers, you hear the familiar ring of his jacket unzipping, slowly, painstakingly so. You glance over your shoulder, the man holds a piece of milled aluminium, he begins to pull it open extremely carefully. It's the camera, whisper, are you sure you won't scare it off? We need a photo, no one will believe us. He continues to pull the lens open. From the corner of your eye you see a sudden cascade of motion ripple through the phasmid's limbs. A series of ultrasonic clicks fill your ear. I am not palatable. Do not eat me. I am afraid. It's afraid. Stop now. Stop now. I won't be one of those fools who didn't take a picture. He has stopped fiddling with the camera, but does not put it down. You see the phasma turn to him. Its mandible antenna reaching out. The motions are quick. Sudden. Who cares about what they think, Kim? Although no, I want to know what it is as well. I have the pheromone. I can approach it. I don't think the pheromone will do anything. His whisper turns to a sceptical hiss, but he has stopped now. Good. The spindly mechanism turns itself back to you, its antenna taking their measure of the air slowly. Say something to it quietly, something like... Don't be afraid. Nothing changes in the cylindrical, cyclical, prey and motion of the creature's limbs. They, they, they are porcelain white on the inside and reed coloured on the out. Beige, light brown and striped. You are unsure if it's scared or not. Come on, electrochemistry. Don't let me down here. Approach carefully. Oh, baby, baby. Come on, baby. Slowly, with your breath held, you take two small steps towards the phasmid, 
the creature lets out a series of ultrasonic clicks that swarm around your head like swallows. Like laughter, a sort of happiness. Sweat drips from your brow, soak in your chest, you reek of it, your chemicals. Hissing and clicking, it extends its mandible-like antenna to greet you. You're right below it now, looking up at the colossal chitin of its white limbs. The head of the creature is crowned by reeds, and its eyes are like small droplets of water. Raise your hand slowly. The insect stops its stridulation, seeming to observe you. Below its crown of reeds, little pinprick eyes detect motion, glittering. The world stands still, still around you. Suddenly, there's silence. No, stop. Be afraid. Raise the other hand. I am not afraid. As you do, the invertebrate comes to life. Its limbs move independent of each other, as if each has a mind of its own. They are white like stalks of porcelain, knitting above you. Shifting around in the reeds around it, in the muddy water, you notice some of its hind legs apparently standing on the water from time to time. It's that light. Hello, I'm Harry. I don't really know who I am. No reply. A total ancient silence comes from its mouth, along with what appears to be some kind of foam. The stridulations of its limbs continue all around you. Stand on your tiptoes and look more closely. You were right. Little bubbles form on the mouth parts of the creature, on its segmented lower lip. It looks to be forming slowly. The form is white, then yellowish. The faintest smell like you've never felt before, like burnt roses. Kim, it's forming. Careful. It may be poisonous. The lieutenant watches you apprehensively. The form slowly turns a darker shade, like a burnt caramel, and the insect moves its mouth parts. Masticating, the little bubbles begin to burst one by one, letting out the same smell like summer burning. Apricot blossoms, white blossoms erupting, erupting, a sensation like cold hands on your face. Tell me what you are doing. Come on, baby, tell me. It's talking to us. I exist. I exist too. Tell me what it's like for you. Fire burning. Fire away. In the city all around, it's going down. On the horizon, pale fire. This thing we're both sensing is coming to an end. That is your problem. Nothing ever ends for me. There is only room for two, maybe three pictures in my mind. For me, it is a series of half-lit images, a kind of darkness, being interrupted upon, sorry, intruded upon, transient, dim, moist. Intruded upon by what? Shapes of plants and animals, and internal sensations, a swarm of sounds, tiny vibrations on the inside of my forearms, all speak of complexities totally beyond my understanding. I'm at the end of a narrow funnel, weightless, so light it only feels like something to be me. In truth, perhaps I'm nothing. I certainly do not have a soul, and if I did, it would never burn. I'm glad to be me, an incredibly sensitive instrument. Few of us can begin to imagine the horrors of you, with all of your creation reflected in your forebrain. It must be like the highest of hells. A kaleidoscope of fire and writhing glass. Eternal damnation. Even when you're sleeping, and when you wake, you carry it around on your neck, with your eyes open that cannot help but swallow more behind the mirror. I feel great, mute empathy for you. For you. <clears throat> it was very disorientating at first, but I'm keeping my shit together. That must be incredibly hard. The anthropods are in silent and meaningless awe of you. Know that we are watching when you're tired. When the visions spin out of control, the insects will be looking on, rooting for you. And when you fall, we will come to raise you up. Bud from you, banner-like, blossom from you and carry you apart in the sky funeral. In honour of your passing, but not me, because I am just a leaf eater. In honour of your will, Lieutenant... Lieutenant Yefritter 
that you kept from falling apart in the face of sheer terror, day after day, second by second. Detective. Arriving. On the scene. Where does this come from, all this around us, the world? Not even the birds know that. Not even the water lilies. We need to know. Perhaps it's sent to us by God. I think we should eat it. <laughs> if it's a leaf, you can put it in your mouth. Or a reed. Yum yum. Wait, so? So you look like a reed and you eat reeds? Yes, they don't mind. Have you accidentally eaten another reed phasmid? Yes, I once cloned myself and ate the little ones. It was winter and I woke up at the wrong time. It was an accident. What exactly are you? I am an unknown species of the order of Phantasmodea, endemic to the insulin in Isola. For the last 350 years I have hidden in plain sight, masquerading as the reeds, moulding, cloning myself, unfolding at night to play with the trash bins and boys. It may have unknown, dangerous biochemical characteristics that help maintain its camouflage. I went unnoticed by the first settlers and the land surveyors of the suzerain, also by the soldiers of the revolution and the officials of the occupation. Even the Seminese islanders who came here first but did not stay have not seen me. I have stayed hidden through four forms of government and two scientific revolutions until I was accidentally discovered by a detective of the citizens militia in Revachol, district of Martinez, March 51. I'm a detective. So am I. I was born to detect sucrose rewards in semi... semi chemicals. What were you born to detect? I was born to detect you. The killer. I was born to detect the killer. He's in a bad state, deteriorating fast now. He thinks I am beneficial to him, but I am not. I only quicken his deterioration. You're destroying him. Very slowly, and only because he won't go away, it is meant to keep them from noticing me, to interfere with the pictures in their heads. But he has looked at me too long, and I am destroying him. Ah, so that's what's happening to him. The phasmid is, is using whatever it uses on him, so that he doesn't, he can't see it. Are you poisonous? Yes, I do not have a startle display, so I use neurodegenerative alamone to aid in camouflage. Do not worry, it is only destructive over long periods of time. Is this a dream and what's happening? No, you are awake. I am real. Light is forming me. This is real. Are you the miracle? No, you are the miracle. How? The moral of our encounter is I am relatively... I am a relatively median life, life form, while you are extreme, all engulfing madness, a volatile simian nervous system, ominously new to the planet. The pale too came with you. No one re remembers it before you. The Kninrans do not. The radically, the radically symmetrics do not. There is an almost unanimous agreement between the birds and the plants that you are going to destroy us all. Wait, the pale is human made? It's a nervous shadow cast onto the world by you, eaten away at reality, a great unnatural territory. Its advent coincides with the arrival of the human mind. I don't have that kind of power. You are a violent and irre irrepressible miracle. The vacuum of cosmos and the stars burning in it are afraid of you. Given enough time, you would wipe us out and replace us with nothing. Just by accident. How? We suspect it will be something like the oxygen holocaust that wiped out anaerobic life 2.6 billion years ago when organisms first started breathing. Only much worse. Worse how? Everything your eyes touch goes back there, behind the nerve mirror. What if you blink? Are we still here? Please don't blink. What if you misplace us all one day or just forget? But I want to blink and undo 12 billion years of matter expansion. I've already forgotten the whole world once when I drank too much.
so it is already happening. Soon, one of you will close your eyes and open them to see that none of this ever existed. Kim, am I having a violent epileptic seizure? <laughs> it doesn't look like that, no. What does it look like? You're just staring at it, he whispers. Then I think I'm having a vision about the final fate of mankind. Okay, after a second the lieutenant asks, is it somehow related to the case? Sort of. Sort of. I think we should take the picture and then you should back away from the unstudied species. Come on then. No, there is one more. No, there are more thoughts. No, there are more thoughts. A series of chirps surrounds you like swallows on a cliffside as the phasmid moves its forearms, timbles visible on the inside of its white stalks. Shit, how do I get back into that? Disengage slowly. Take the picture. Wait there, I want to talk to it again. Oh, I can't. Okay, Kim. Take the picture. Okay. With a slow ring of metal, the lieutenant slides the lens open and raises it at eye level. There is no change in the insect's motion while it's being aimed at the camera. It remains fixated on you. In three, the man whispers. His voice is tense. If it moves, you jump back. I'll shoot. Here we go. Three, two, one. The shrill flash of the camera cuts the air like the blade of a sword. The phasmid freezes into its bright light. Head turned towards the lieutenant. Hypnotised by the flash, it stands frozen before you. I got it. You hear the lieutenant whisper as the creature's shape develops onto the photo paper in his hand. A polychrome ghost of white streaks against the reeds in the sky and you as a shadow before it. For all time. Slowly reach out and touch the creature's whisker. The antenna hung from a great height. With your hands shaking you barely touch the tip of the left whisker. On contact the chitin curls into a spiral like the tip of a poison ivy. Its touch on your fingertip feels cold, ticklish. The sensation is electrifying, resounding through your body. It is surprisingly delicate, the curly end of the whisker like a young vine. It's even a bit wet. Looks like someone's got hurt in a fight. The antenna is much smaller than the other one. Be careful detective, it's moving. Look at your finger. You were right, it glistens with some kind of moisture. The creature in front of you stays frozen. Lick your finger. It tastes like sugar, very faint. The anthropod towers above you, tufts of reeds pointing from limb and head alike. Odorless, mostly comprised of water, carefully pet its sight like forearm. The limb before you is incredibly light, like eggshell. It's much lighter than a reed. You feel a soft push could tip the creature over, its hollow exoskeleton collapsing. Warning. I don't care. Run your hand up the slender limb higher. A small shudder passes the creature's arm. High above you, its black pearl eyes still glisten, mesmerised by the light passing its nervous system. There is some kind of countdown happening as it slowly processes the overwhelming brightness of the signal. The invertebrate is regaining control. The stimulus overloaded it. It's passing like an extended moment or a gallstone. We got it. Back off. Another shudder pulses through the creature's limbs. It jolts back to life like a record continuing where it left off. In a swaying, praying motion, even the small black pearls of its eyes do not stray from you. Disengage slowly. As you're turning away, the phasmid mirrors your movements, stepping on the water. The long limbs carry its feather weight without breaking its surface.
That is amazing. I've got so many questions. Like, at first thought, this kind of solidifies the idea of the pale in the being like a supernatural theme. But does it? Because at the end of the day, the only thing talking to that creature was myself. My own mind and what the creature could possibly think. That creature didn't really talk to me. Or did it? And just like that, it's gone. Skating away across the sea, calm mirror like a skipping stone, leaving nothing but circles on the water. And something under it, in place it's in the place it stood, bobbing there among the reeds, a collection of items. It's gone. The lieutenant looks north, with his hand raised to his brow. It can walk on water. Apparently, yes. Like a water strider only. He shakes his head with amazement. I've never seen anything like that in my life. What's that in the reeds? He squints. Looks like a nest of some sort. We should have a look. What now? The old man behind you repeats suddenly. He puts his hand into the ash. It's dirty and black. In some kind of strange semi-catatonic state. Our suspect not looking too good. We need to check on him. Right, hold on. Before we do that, we need to check the reeds. Oh shit, look. Clasters passport, so that's where it went. The bloody phasmid stole it. Evidence. Fairweather T500 helmet. And the killer's rifle scope. Okay. Brother, you've managed to collect all of the armour pieces. Too bad it's too late for the big showdown. Yeah, tell us about it. I don't think this helmet would have helped me anyway. Yeah, true. It would have looked very impressive. Still, you found it all. Now your mortal coil is completely protected. Few cops are this futuristic. At least now I'm truly invincible. Oh, believe it, I am invincible. Oh yes, look at this. The helmet actually looks hideous, doesn't it? I think I prefer my beanie. Right, now I want to have a look at that journal. Her passport, let's have a look. This passport, issued by the Sovereign Republic of Orange, is issued to a black-haired woman called Katarzyne Alassiji, which is the name she gave us when we, we figured it out. Clash's hidden documents, the lieutenant looks at it in your hands from the empty boy. Look at the photo. It's Clasher with short black hair and glasses. She looks boyish, younger somehow. An old photo before life came, did what it does. What was this doing in the Phasmid's nest? Maybe our man Mr. Draw took it from Clasher, or whatever her name was, hiding, hiding place, or... I, th I think the Phasmid took it. Like a magpie, he looks around. What a coincidence. Then it would also have collected the other objects, which would be highly unusual. I can see how the helmet could wash up on the island, and then the scope may be. Mr. Draw lost it, but to seek out this world would be... To seek out this would be very unusual behaviour for an anthropod. Wouldn't it? Maybe it was simply curious. Yeah. Yeah, that's right, because it did say when we spoke with that it loves playing with boys. An octopus belongs to a very different class. It's not even an insect, it's a mollusk. But yes, I see your point. Wait there. Watch this. Perhaps it had a vendetta against Miss Orange. Phasmids are not capable of, of holding grudges. Only humans and some tracking predators do that. It says, Katarzyn Alastia. He opens his notes. She said it would be for Anult Major Smith. Anult Major Smith. I told you she kept lying to you. She's probably lying to someone else right now in, in another city. Yeah, that name was supposed to be her real name. She lied to us. 
Yes, somehow she managed to lie to us one more time. In a way, she's still lying to us right now. The lieutenant smiles. Now wait there, I want to see what the rest says. Maybe it's her real passport and not the fake. No, she lied to us. Yeah. What's her real name then? I don't know, but it's not Katazine, Alastje, or Klasje, or Anouk. We didn't even scratch the surface with her detective. He looks east. Perhaps it's better that we didn't arrest her. Who knows what the hell she'll be raising in my district by now. Put the passport away. Well then, let's see what Dio, or Draw, Draw, sorry. Draw's got to say about that. What is it? What do you want from me? I can't go. Something is very wrong with him now. Sir, how would you not see the phasmid? S -s -s he stares at the reeds and it falls silent. Mr. Draw? The man does not respond. He kept staring. Black eyes glazed over and bulging from their sockets. His gap-toothed mouth shaken. With fear and longing. Like an addict of some terrible substance. Snap your fingers under his nose. A light shiver passes him followed by nothing. His hands are trembling and he breathes slowly. He's going into some kind of psychomotor immob immobility. The lieutenant inspects him gently. The good news is this solves our transportation problem, doesn't it Mr. Draw? <laughs> the trembling mouth appears to sigh. Between this and the broken tie, tyre he's used for a boat. I think it's safe to leave him here while we go and get help. It will need to be me me medical first I'm afraid. We found some things in the Fasmid sent Mr. Draw. He stares in at the reeds. Your words don't stir anything in him. Perhaps you should... Show him the scope. He turns his eyes to it. I lost. You lost it, Mr. Draw. He turns his eyes to the reeds again, as he's done so many times. Beige and white stripes. He lost the scope. Then it somehow made its way over there. With the help of the magpie phasmid, the lieutenant observes lens sparkle sparkle in your hand. This sight is a T9, Mr. Draw. Was it attached to the rifle when you made the shot? Not even a sigh. You've gotten all you will out of this poor being. Show him the passport. No reaction. His breathing is slow and he appears very old all of a sudden, around 80. This is an old man at last, no longer a tin soldier, but the broken down remains of a man. Did you take this passport and all the papers from a boy in the coast? He blinks and continues to stare at the reeds. The spirit. So it was the phasmid. He hears us. The spirit. No reply. He's gone again. Show him the helmet. Nothing. Just dull staring. Not even a rage left wherever he is. The last embers have gone out. The war is over. If Kuno kicked it into the sea, as he said he did, the ebb would pull it back here. This makes sense. Mr. Draw could have picked it up, or the phasmid even. If it, it, if it did, this is incredible. I'm going to let you rest now, Mr. Draw. The plastic cape flaps around his face in a gust of wind. His back is slouched and his mouth open. The backs of his eyes are, are the blacks of his eyes are receding. His pupils are returning to normal. The strength has all gone out of him. Just frail old bones in a sack of tracksuit trousers and a windbreaker. What has happened to this man? Old age and shock. He looks at him, then you. I think it's the phasmid. Yes. The arrest and the appearance of the phasmid, the combined stress, he looks at you. But you think it's something more than that, don't you? I do. There's much more. Remember what it said when it spoke. Quite a few things about the health check you did on him make sense now. He couldn't see it, Kim. It was just the reads for him. Before, when I evaluated his state, he seemed strangely animated. I talked to the phasmid. It said it's destroying him. You should be more careful, detective. Are you sure it wasn't having an effect on you? Maybe. Anyway, it's only trying to remain unseen. The degra degradation is a side effect. A valid hunch. Long-term exposure to something like that could be neurodegenerative. Also, please be careful when approaching unknown species in the future, detective. He couldn't see it, Kim. It's just the reads for him. That could be part of the shock, but you're right. Something is off here, Mr. Draw. He touches the man's shoulder. No response. 
Maybe this is how the phasmid has been staying hidden all these years. Then how did we see it, he thinks. Oh, you mean whatever does this, does it over time. Teenagers, kids, drunks, sightings are brief. Oh shit, that's right. Because when the, the cryptozoologist woman saw it as a kid, maybe she only had a brief interaction with it and that's why she could remember it. And hence not credible, but someone who spends a long time with it, yes, you forget it's there. The lieutenant inspects the man, Mr. Draw. Have you ever seen a stick insect pretend to be in the reeds? The, the, the old man stutters. The doctors will have to look at this. I hope your station has better medical personnel than 57. This is a little advance for a nurse. Before, when I evaluated his state, he seemed animated. He nods. He was energetic and articulate. After all these years alone, with little hygiene or medication, I would expect worse. Perhaps this animation is induced by something in the phasmid. He does not seem to be animated now once he's left. He looks once it's left. He looks to the sea. Honestly, I'm ready to believe anything at this point. Maybe it is psychoactive. I mean, why not? It's three metres tall. He takes off his glasses and cleans them. When he puts them back on, he's still staring at the sea. I think he's addicted to that thing. Like a drug. He has displayed addict behaviour and not just painkillers. His pupils appear to be dilated. They are still. He examines the catatonic man's eyes. Could it be that there's something hormonal in his relationship to the phasmid? You mean pheromonal? He seemed a little off for a man this age, Randy. The scope, knowing of her bruises, his disposition towards Miss Orange, he nods. I see what you mean. He's been here for a long time. Who knows how much of it in how much of it is in its company i don't even understand what that means he's been here for a long time who knows how much of it in its company all right i get you how much time he spent in the creature's company he did seem distressed when i finally came to arresting him like he didn't want to leave this place and the insect maybe he looks at his notebook i have absolutely forgotten to take notes i hope i remember all of this he shakes his head in disbelief this will be one hell of a report thank god we have the photo Hang tight. We should think about getting back to the mainland to get help. He'll be safe there if we don't take too long. Right, come on then. Let's get back to the mainland. That is wild. Oh, no, it is. I honestly thought that like the phasmid case wasn't going anywhere. It was just that side quest that was over with. But my god, am I impressed? I'm so happy. It's real. Everything's real. The pale, everything. I hope it is again. There's no concrete concrete evidence, is there? Well, the truck doesn't think say the pale's real, so maybe the pale is real. But how it's all coming to an end, even with a two millimetre hole in the in the church. The skiff is swaying on the waves by the dock. Let's return to the mainland. Let's, we're done here, he says, adjusting his glasses as he looks out over the water. The skiff rocks gently under your weight as you get in. The ride back is uneventful and quiet. But, the sound of conversation on the water. There is someone inland waiting for you. Two men and one woman. That's the... The El Puta Madre. Stand on the concrete square of a nameless village, looking at a small yellow boat as it draws closer. The sea is calm. You reach the jetty and climb out of the skiff. You reach the jetty and... Yep. Done. You're quite the tide, Partin. The man without sunglasses says, suddenly his expression changes and he tilts his head. Oh, look it is. It's my boss. That we spoke to on the phone, he's an arsehole. I want to call you a teapot. But I'm honestly kind of impressed. 
No idea where you got all that gear, but there's no doubt in my mind that some bad, bad people are looking for it. Also, you look like a fucking idiot. What are you talking about? I look pimping. Whatever this is, it is completely unimportant compared to what you've just seen. I agree. This is the man with the sunglasses from the whirling in rags. But where are, are his sunglasses? You're the man with the sunglasses. That's right. And you're some kind of murder machine. I'm not even going to tell them about it. They don't deserve it. The armour? No one else seems bothered by it. Oh really? They don't seem bothered by it? That's because you're a cop in an exoskeleton. Yeah, I'm a cop in a goddamn exoskeleton. Actually, are you? Are you still a cop? There's so much disco going on. It's hard to tell. Vic, calm down. Who are you, people? Hello, I'm Trant Heidelstam. I believe we've met on several occasions. Oh, hello, Trant. I'm your goddamn partner, Jean Vicmar, and this is your special task force, or what's left of it. Shit. Maybe I am the. the bloody. El Puta Madre. But I'm not anymore. I've changed. Special consultant Trant Heidelstam, patrol officer Judith Mino. Hi. Hello. We have come to scrap what's left of you off the pavement. Lieutenant Kim Kisuragi, Precinct 57. We've just come from the island where our investigation led us. We might need your help with something later. He adds, suddenly regaining his confidence. As if he recalled that he's, in fact, a decorated police lieutenant and not a naughty boy. But this is clearly a departmental matter. So I'm going to leave you to discuss it among yourselves. No, Kim. You've got to have my back. Let's destroy them. It's good to meet you, Lieutenant Kitsuragi. She says warmly, flashing Kim the tiniest of smiles. Letting the Lieutenant know he shouldn't feel embarrassed over the shitstorm that's about to befall you. I'm going to tell them. Forget about all this. There's a giant. You're not forgetting about anything. Look at you. Okay then. What is this about? Ari, we want to help you. Trant, I believe this is where you come in. This is the horse-faced woman. I don't know why you named her that, but it was beyond idiotic. <laughs> you should never address her using those words again. Um, I don't quite know what I'm doing here. I was asked to participate as an expert. I think I need to manage your expectations a little. I'm at best an enthusiast in cognitive science. My background is in something else entirely. I engage in neurology on a merely theoretical level. In fact, I should probably get going. No, Trant, it's too late. You're part of this shit now. What have you got to say for yourself, shit kid? What does he have to say for himself? He let you. He left you to catch the bullets. Yeah, I... I don't think he is the man in sunglasses. Oh, I, I don't know. How did you know I was here? The cafeteria manager you fucked over told us where you went. Turn to face the general direction of the Whirlwind and yell, Damn you cafeteria manager, you betrayed me for the last time. I understand, okay, God told you. Uh, and she looks around. People on his street help us too, with your whereabouts. You're a legend among the drunks, Harry. A legendary local drunk. You aren't the man with the sunglasses at all. You're not even blonde. Guilty as charged. He exchanges a look with the special consultant. I heard you'd lost your mind and your memory. I wanted to see if it was true. Yeah, this I'm sure this is my boss, not my partner. And it was. Good work, Harry. You're insane now. There's one less person for me and everyone else to rely on. He was too sarcastic for you to realise who he was.
Maybe if you hadn't been so sarcastic, I would have realised I knew you. Actually, I suspected something was off. Did you? He adjusted his tie. Or did you literally not recognise my face? We've been partners for how long, Harry? Don't answer that. You don't remember. Judging by the familiarity you feel towards him, two years minimum, or maybe a short but close stint on the task force. He's right. Don't start guessing. Now's not a good time. You, not the female officer. I'm sorry I didn't recognise you before. It's okay, she sighs. I didn't come here to gloat out to fool you. Neither did he, actually. She gestures towards Vikamir. We're just worried. Really? That's right, worried. I've always worried about you. Every time you don't show up to work or when you do, but stink. You're a worry fest. She's worried about you. I'm worried about you. Even special consultant Backpedal is worried about you. Everyone worries. Instead of working. So Trant Heilstorm turns out to be special consultant Trant Heil... Heidelstam. Yes, I'm Trant Heidelstam. I never said I wasn't him. Wait. What's up with the kid then? Mikhail? Mikhail's my son. Oh yeah. But what's up with all that interest in history spying on me? No. I was just interested in the Feld building and the Mart- Oh shit! So that- Yes! That's the guy and his son that was outside of the Feld building. Fucking hell, it's all falling into place. No. I was just interested in the Feld building and the Martinez beachhead and Mikhail wanted to see Martinez. It was a coincidence. Him being there with his son, it was not a coincidence. It's difficult to see but he was worried about you, and also interested in the Fell building. So what are you, special consultant here? What indeed? He looks at the dilapidated shacks, then you. I was asked to share my take on some of the more obscure theories developed in Konigstein in the 30s, like partial psychotraumatic amnesia, group personality theory. He's here to see if you're insane. He's smart, let's move on. Due to gain, no one's who they say they are. You mentioned a task force. Yeah, Major Crimes Unit under Lieutenant Dubois and Vikamir. Ring any bells? Refresh my memory. Who else is in this? Refresh your memory? It's a goddamn Major Crimes Unit. There's you, me, Jude, Trant fucking Heidelstam, and Gulamia Bevy. He stares at you. I'm technically just civilian advisor. Fuck you. You're part of this shit show. Who's Gulamia Bevy? Oh, that's an interesting story, actually. He's not smiling. Gulamir Bevy is a police reporter who joined our team. He was really good, then he left, because he lost faith in your ability to lead the unit. Other people have left too. Good smart people. People we won't get back. Only me and this really patient patrol officer are still here, and Trant, because I'm forcing him to stay. So what does the unit do? Do? It's a major crimes unit. We clear the desk of cases so Precinct 41 doesn't look like the worst station in town. We're shit here now, Harry, because of you. There's your posse. Or what remains of it. Hand picked, hand lost. The 41st isn't, he trails off, not wishing to finish the sentence. Where have you been all this time? There was a mercenary tribunal. God damn it, Harry. He shifts his weight, crosses his arms and looks you in the eye. You told us to fuck off. You said we were cramp in your style. Your detective god fuck everything and will burn, detect or lie, to die, detect or die. I did kind of say that. Wait, so you let me face a squad of trained killers alone just to teach me a lesson? It wasn't like that. Fuck you, Harry. We didn't know there was going to be a tribunal, did we? Why didn't you detect or die then? Oh, you think it was cool you saying that? Aesthetic, somehow. You were crying when we got here, breaking things. You said we were going into the abyss. None of us wanted to see the abyss, so we fucked off, he sighs, like you told us to. Duped again. No one's who they say they are. Duped. Hey, here's a brilliant idea. Don't be a morbid drunk and you won't be duped so easily. God and scab leader, this. Turn to the lieutenant. Tell me at least. You are who you said you were. <laughs> no. Okay, that does have something to do with it, yes. None of this is ringing any bells. The bells aren't ringing because you have brain damage, Trant. He turns to the blonde. This is where you come in. How bad is it? Well... He doesn't have visible tremors, he talks without slurring, he can drive a boat, he's standing, <laughs> he's standing, reasoning, all good signs, but complete retrograde amnesia, episodic and semantic. Meaning you forgot both who you are and the definition of money, Itala, pale and so on. 
as displayed in the station call, our interactions with him, and I don't want to be a snitch, he makes air quotes, but also mine with him before, when Harry did not seem to know who I was. It's all very interesting. Interesting? Yes, interesting. I have my theories, but I would like to hear Harry's thoughts first. Harry, he turns to you. What do you think happened to you? Neurologically, psychologically, and, well, not socio-economically. I drank so much I lost my memory. Something so sad happened to me that I couldn't be me anymore. It was a defence mechanism. Psychotraumatic amnesia trend. He turns to the special consultant. I can go for that. Shit kid is a broken man. Always has been. Who isn't? I know I am. But you know what? He turns back to you. I kept my shit together. Also, I ain't no person. Can't wipe their own mind. However traumatic it gets. That doesn't happen. You're lying. Or insane. Or both. But Detective Vikamir. She interjects. He has blanked out before. I have. Yes, a couple of times. After some of the more serious benders, she pauses, remembering. One was after the two drunks case. The other when we looked into the mural. Interesting. So at first he dipped his toes into it, prepared. That's where he would have gotten the idea. Yes, practice. And then he used alcohol to get there, so to speak. What do you mean? Well, here is my theory. What if this is an absolutely normal reaction to the world we're living in? What if this is not a significant anomaly at all? Something to be explained approached as a defect? Look at the sensory input here. He gestures towards the scenery. Look at the ruins, the neon, listen to the radio, the multitude, the people. Live here for 40 years as a police detective. He's like a magnetic reader on the world tape. To borrow a known metaphor, Harry's been pushed flat against it, total input. Hardwired to the free market, he nods confidently. He just needed for it to end. Okay, Tran, thank you. That's absolutely meaningless. I'm glad we brought you. Will he or will he not be able to work in the Major Crimes Unit? Is he a cretin now? I want to know that. He is not a cretin, and he is able to work. If not in his previous leadership role, then as a line detective. I'm ready to lead again. No one even mentioned that. He looks at you, then at Trant. I misphrased my question. It should have been, is he able to put his clothes on and use the potty, or do we need to get him on a disability pension? They can keep that pension. You're rock solid. You can put your clothes on hard. What now? Now nothing. Now we're just going to stand here. Really? No. Now we discussed that. He points to the water. What the fuck did you do to your motor carriage? Why is it there, Harry? Hold on. It's the ocean. <laughs> um... I thought the killer would be underwater, he wasn't. Tequila sunset. I also jumped the canal, by the way. <laughs> he grabs his stomach in humorless laughter. Tequila sunset jumped the canal. So funny, Harry. Thank you for fucking me. <laughs> e hey, what a legend. Thank you for destroying 45,000 real of police property. That's coming out of my pay slip. You know that, right? You're going to get fired, and I'm going to pay till I die. It doesn't matter, he exhales so calm. He's breathing. Your badge, Harry. Show me your badge. I got my badge right here. In a rush to demonstrate your badge, your eager fingers can't sustain a grip of the wet plastic, and the badge slips out of your hand. Shit. <gasps> Fuck me. Go on. Catch it, baby. Ah, oh, you juggle the badge for a second unsuccessfully, and it lands on the ground some two metres away. He found it. The patrol officer picks it up and gives it back to you. Slippery and cold. He found it, Jean. It's his badge. The man stares at you, unimpressed. And your gun? I've got it here, baby. As if having your badge and gun are natural states, not achievements. My gun is right here. Show him the gun. Whoa. He has it. And he didn't drop it. He wipes his brow in mock relief. You're drunk like a bum, Harry. Put that thing away before you kill someone. I quit drinking forever, and it's only me in this boring hellhole now. I don't buy it. Why do you smell like a corpse then, huh? He's wounded. He looks at you. It's been a long week, and he's handled an actual corpse.
None of this matters. My order situation is meaningless compared to what I've discovered. What you've discovered, you've let the suspect escape a certain class year because you were too drunk to assess her flight risk. We've read the reports, Harry. Lieutenant Kitsuragi, we know. She was some kind of spy from the Occident, specially trained. Not taking her in was the right thing to do. She gave a vital clue that led us to the island. Oh well, if she was nice, he rubs her face and his face in frustration. I'm not even going to get into the other suspect, who also escaped. Yeah, Ruby something. Or the fact that you're Everett Clare's little peon now, doing I don't know what for him. That's small time stuff. That's nothing. That's a humorous anecdote. Compared to the six people who were gunned down, the streets are literally red with blood. Harry, it was a fucking mass murder. He did everything he could, the lieutenant interrupts him. We did everything we could. The company hired unvetted mercenaries. Lieutenant Dubois got between them and the locals. Here comes the cavalry. He did so at considerable risk to his own life. He was shot and survived only because of his armour. We stopped an execution, not a negotiation. The loss of life was minimal compared to what it could have been. I also solved the case. It solved all of it. Detective, it's better if I do that, he says in a lower voice. Okay. It's so much better if he does this. A million times better. <laughs> Thank you for the input, Lieutenant Kitsuragi. I didn't mean to su suggest you didn't handle the situation. He thinks of apologising but decides against it. He brushes a stray strand of hair out of his eye and coughs. You've spent weeks with him on this case. What is your take? On the case? On Lieutenant... Efrita Dubois. Well, he pulls up his collar. The drinking, the gun losing, also losing his badge, that's all true. Although he has not been drinking on the job this week. Get in. See? One week. Then there's the apocalypse thing. At first I thought it was a joke, but it's not. He actually thinks the world is about to end. In a bloodletting or a glooming, we're about to become. Vapor even. Oh shit. It's odd. Basically, in light of his political views, Detective Dubois is, as you know, a hustler. He... He pinches the root of his nose, grinds, he makes the real. He's a visionary and a money engineer. <laughs> Which is just, he shakes his head. And then there's the motor carriage in the sea, something I was not present for. He breathes in sharply. But despite all of this, he is a great detective, one of the best I've seen in fact. He can talk human beings into telling him everything. And he doesn't stop. In all the time we've spent, I've spent with him, he has not once stopped pursuing leads. However far-fetched and tangential. Tangential. He is tireless, madly driven. Well, except that one time when he stopped to sing karaoke, which, by the way, was a valiant effort. He really sang his heart out. Yeah, it was what it was. Other than that one time, he has tirelessly worked on the case, and he solved it. We have a confession, a murder weapon, and the perpetrator, locked on the island right now, awaiting transportation. He apprehended a straggler who strayed, stayed hidden for 50 years, ever since the revolution, who's probably committed other murders over those years. He pauses. Oh, and he also discovered a new species. A new species? A colossal stick insect. It was on the island, camouflaged as the reeds. It unfolded from the reeds. I think we may be dealing with the insulin phasmid. He takes out a photo of the phasmid and shows it to the officers across the yard. The wind blows flat on the glossy rectangle on his hand, in his hand. You hear, hear gasps beneath the howling of the wind. As you can see, it's about three metres tall in fact. We think it may be the largest land invertebrate ever discovered. Boom shakalaka motherfucker. <laughs> Fucking hell is that? The man cranes his neck, still looking at the photo. Is this somehow connected to the case? Detective, he turns to you. Kim, yes. I believe the pheromone it emits may be responsible for the killer's mental degradation. The old man was not aware of the phasmid's presence, exhibiting a strange, atypical dementia. He fell into the stupor after its appearance. He became near catatonic. So it is connected. I must say, this, he points to the photo, is absolutely extraordinary. I don't even have words for it. Yes, it really does make it hard to fire the drunk. 
His tired eyes follow the photo as the lieutenant puts it away. This is a very, very sad man who has just seen something that made him forget his sadness. Now you make your case. Now is the time. Now or never. Kima also started a nightclub at the church. Killer, we have a motive. The previous head of the Debadiers Union was assassinated by our killer. There was also a dead man on the boardwalk. So basically I can say everything. I'll start with, the previous head of the Debadiers Union was assassinated by our killer. The lieutenant lowers his voice just a little. This is a conversation for when we are no longer out in the open, in Martineers, where Everett and Edgar Clay, he has everything. And eyes too, you return from the island, must not have gone unnoticed. Understood of course. But a case against Everett would be big. The consultant too has lowered his voice. I would prefer not to partake in anything union related for political neutrality. Kim, I also started in a, a nightclub in the church. What was that? He cups his ear, the wind blows. It sounded like you set up a nightclub in the church. Yeah, and I discovered a hitherto unexplored en entropenetical phenomenon in there too. A two millimetre hole in the world. That's great. Entrepreneur. It's a great new career for you. After police officer. I don't care. Go live in the pale. Four kids were living in a tent on ice. They were going to drown when it melted. It's not optimal, but the building was abandoned. So you put them in there, it's okay. Oh, he's got my back. Look at this awesome story he fabricated. It's not that okay. Get off the subject now. Also, the phasmid was female. The reeds are its nest. Female? What makes you think so? You had to see it. It had the subdued colours of a female and the nest and behaviours too, I think. Incredible. Were there eggs in the nest? Not as far as I could see. There were other things there though, he turns to you. It had gathered items in a nest. A helmet, a scope and a passport. Actually, you know, this would indicate it was a male. This is far, far from anything in my field, but I think such nests are called bowers. They are for attracting mates. Hmm. Well, it could have been male, actually. It must be robust if it can move a helmet with its limbs, he trails off lost in thought. I think it reproduces by path pathogenesis. As in cloning itself, what makes you think so? Observation. It told me. Just a hunch. Observation. Well, then it wouldn't matter if it's male or female. The bow would just be a rudimentary behaviour from before the parthenogenetic mutation. Very interesting, he looks around, quickly assessing the coast. Such organisms are extremely vulnerable to disease. A single strain of bacteria could wipe out the whole species. We're probably looking at conservation efforts here. I think it emits a chemical that makes it look even more like the reeds. That would be a chiromone, a pheromone that's seemingly beneficial to the host. It usually stimulates the affected nervous system. Not the humans, of course, but perhaps a predators? The perpetrator seemed intoxicated somehow, like an addict. It's just a hunch, but... There are species of bees that, under the influence of chiromones, take wasp larvae to their hives. Ants do the same with aphids, thinking there, he stops. Do you think this is how it stayed hidden? Nothing is off the table, but I want to stress this. The find does not have to be connected to the case. The case is 100% prosecutable without any chiromones. Of course, Lieutenant, of course. We should treat the case and the phasmid as completely separate from each other. People are not going to, he shakes his head. They're not going to go for this speculation in the constabulary. It had mandibles that looked like hay, and it was completely white on the inside. Yes, but also reed coloured, beige and brown. Little green on the outside, after unfolding from a single stalk. It still retained parts that looked like reed tufts on its limbs. Incredible. The PR valuable of this is exceptional. Cop discovers new species. Maybe even discovers the insulin and phasmid. No, that's too much. This would really help with some of the problems we've been having. Absolutely. This is great. This does not say vigilante murderers to me at all. This says science, news, human interest, he smiles. You know, it's a really good thing you have that photo. Without it, he shakes his head. You're doing good here. Perhaps only for a moment, but still. 
quick while you're ahead or no? Nah. The killer. Draw. We have a strong motive for him. Lilianovich, a special consultant, raises an eyebrow. A revolutionary Martinum. What does that mean? The customs started in Grad where they have patronyms. Krasovich, Larsovich, etc. The revolutionaries saw this as a chauvinist atavism, so they used martronyms derived from the mother's name instead. This man's mother was Lillian. He's Lillian's son, L Lilianovich. The custom was overturned after the revolution failed, but not before it made, us, made it to Revachol. So it is what a soldier of the ICM would be called. Thank you, Trant. Thank you for your piece of cultural theory. He turns to you. You said you have a motive. Of course, excuse me. I just thought it was noteworthy. He killed the mercenary hoping to start a war between the company and the union. He killed him as an act of rage induced by the phasmids. He killed a mercenary, mercenary in an act of jealousy. Did he do that though? <clears throat> I think he did. Jealousy. Jealousy, I thought this Lilianovich was an old man to have been hiding for 50 years, 70 something. A strange psychosexual fixation, aggravated, possibly by, pos possibly by proximity to the phasmid and its chemicals. He himself gave a political reason, said she had, he had killed an, an enemy combatant. Also, we have ballistics from the gun, matching the bullet found on the dead mercenary's head, and two officers on the scene that Mr. Drew confessed to. It's a clean win. It's way more than that. It's more than that. A perfect folding mechanism. Perfect folding mechanism, he rolls his eyes. Get over yourself, Harry. I can still smell the booze in the wind. God damn it. Does it ever leave? It is there. Like in your bones or something. It will pass in time. There's also a dead man on the boardwalk. A missing person I found. Yes, yes. Falling through a gap on the boardwalk drunk. How did you know I found him? The body was transported to Precinct 41, Armorg. I had Tilbrook and Mullins take care of the funeral arrangements and family stuff. You're not the only cop in the world, Harry. This all comes back to us. Still, she says quietly, good work with the missing person detective. It's still a point for you, no denying it. I also look into the mystery of the doomed commercial area. He shrugs. I don't know what a doomed commercial area is. Rue de saint Gillian, 10. A commercial building where all business goes bankrupt. I look into it. The curse turned out to be possibly entropenetical, part of my larger investigation into Martinez itself. No, it didn't. It didn't turn to be entropenetical again. Funny, enough with this isolary pale. Two millimetre hole in the world line. This isn't Paradox B. We're a police force. It doesn't look like the lieutenant wishes you to push this angle further. Okay. Cut it out is indeed what he's thinking. I confiscated drugs from the Kuno's dad. Who's Kuno? You don't want to know. You're right, Lieutenant. I don't. He turns to you. You snorted the drugs. I know you did. It's all right. I mean, at this point, anything is but the drink. Well, I didn't. I fucking got them in my inventory. So what do you say? Want to take this hot shit back? Point to yourself? I don't want to, but you discovered a new species and solved the murder, he shrugs. So I have to judge. So I have to, Jude. A quick nod. Anything that ends the trial is okay by me. You haven't been drinking, she thinks. So maybe this time. Agreed. The public relations potential of this is too valuable to let go. Okay, he sighs. We have vehicles in the square, and the perpetrator needs to be taken into custody. Let's go. Wait, I've got a few questions before we go about who I am. The man looks westward impatiently, jingling his keys in his pocket. Am I a dirty cop wo working for La Puta Madre? No. No, because the suspects seem to think. You're too unstable to work for a mob boss. You're suicidal, Harry. No bob mob boss would take you. I assure you, I wouldn't consult for a corrupt unit. Oh, that's good news. I told you it's not that bad. Who am I? 
Who are you? You're a gym teacher, Harry. What? Well, obviously, you're not a gym teacher anymore, but, but before. Before you were a cop, you were a gym teacher in Kuron. She looked around. It's getting really cold outside, should we, maybe? It does explain a lot. Harry, it explains everything. The running around, the jumping, the bicep girth, your inexplicable facial hair, <laughs> the collection of the found sports we ever amassed. <laughs> The fact that you don't seem to know what homosexuality is and how you're able to perform a 360 degree spin kick too. Fucking damn right. Also, this guy. Just everything about this guy. When was this? When was I a gym teacher? In your 20s or late 20s, you've literally let yourself go since then. He looked you over. You said in Kuron, I was a gym teacher there. Yes, you taught gym in Kuron. I believe that's the term. I taught gym in high school. You were a high school gym teacher. The smell of sweat and glue. The worn floorboards. High school, Harry. Your, your goings on with Kuno, Andre, Isel, the whole thing on the ice. That's why you're so juvie. His smirk suggests barely contained laughter. Why did I join the RCM? The regular. You found some chick. She inspired you to fight the big fight. Be more than you are all that. Bloody hell, Dora. You, every morning, walking from Voyager Road to teach gym, she leaving for the academy with her spring coat on, the air filled with the smell of smoke and raspberries, an incredible hope, an ocean full of hope. Fuck, was she a policewoman too and she convinced me to join the academy? Okay, I see now. Why am I like this? It's not a mystery, some chick fucked you over, also you're drunk. You really went with it too, really maximised the damage, some chick who? Dora something. Dora England, he thinks. Yeah, you mentioned her name. Not Dora Dubois, so we never got married. So we weren't even married. No one is married anymore. This is Revachol. When was this? God, I don't know, he thinks. Six years ago? She, she was way before my time. Six years and you haven't gotten over it. What the hell is wrong with you? Six years. Yeah, or seven. You're not doing 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 too good there. It's an old man thing. Two old years equals one normal year. That and Dora England really tore you and you want a big one. Who was she? Incredibly bangable. Huh? No, I meant what did she do? She was incredibly fuckable. A beautiful bourgeois woman. Why? Why fish? Like a welkin, basically. Heartbreak welkin. Pain Welkin. <laughs> I've only seen a picture, but it's obvious you formed a real spiritual connection with how pretty she was. So that that that's all I was fixated on. One you never recuperated from. Look, she turns to face the, the sea. The sun is going down, it's time to go home. I think she taught in the Academy des Arts. East of the river, way east. Hard to say which came first. The middle class chick or the drink. Egg and the chicken kind of thing. My point is, you need to see a psychiatrist about this shit, not a psychologist. Several degrees harder. Is there something harder than a psychiatrist? He pauses to think. A forensic psychiatrist. Go talk to that. Precinct 41. What kind of sex station is it? Us? We're the bloody murder station. Haven't you heard? We're the bad guys. No one likes us. It's not true. Jamrock was too big for one precinct. You're just understaffed, and everyone respects the 41st. You have Captain Price. Thank you, Lieutenant. You're being kind. It is understaffed, and the district is too big, which is why we need to, he tilts his head south northward. Get back to it. We left Torshin and McLean to run Sea Wing. It's not good. Torshin and McLean. Mac the Torso, Torshin, and Chester McLean. She arches an eyebrow. They're not fit to run a wing, believe me. Things are shaky as it is, and the Sea Wing? God, he sighs. There are four wings, A, B, C and D, we're in C. It's made of losers and clock punchers. You and I reconceptualized it as a task force. It was a mistake. There's also a lot of outside help involved. Not only me, he smiles, other losers too. He's anything but a loser, although he would like to be seen as one. It's cooler that way. And Price is? Told me Price. He's the son of the old Price, until the founders of the RCM. He's one of the most highly regarded men in the force, you're lucky. 
Somewhere under the curved roof of a former silk factory, shaped like a ladybird with two chimneys, police captain Ptolemy Price sits behind a heavy wooden desk. Resident medic Nix Gottlieb pours him coffee. It's silent in the captain's office. They speak of change, the city, the tension on the streets. They speak of the events of April and the blood on the streets in May. Did we recently shoot up a church by any chance? So he remembers that, yes. There may have been a raid on some churches that wasn't good press. Shooting up churches never is. I was out of town to be clear. What happened? Why did we go there? Our enemies were hiding in a church. To the best of our information that's it. I'm not talking about this anymore. Your security clearance is shit here right now. We have to wait for it to go up. He means it. The RCM and its enemies will not be discussed on this coast. Your clearance will not go up while you're within earshot of the Union headquarters. So I'll work in the bloody murder station. It's not the bloody murder station. It's an old converted silk mill with green desk lamps and a coffee corner. A lot of good people work there. Jamrock is the largest ghetto in Revachol. Forburg, technically, but it's divided into 11 districts. Jamrock only has us. The press will blow over, he says in a re reassuring tone. Jamrock is lucky to have you, and it's often considered to be the greatest of the district. You're lucky to have it. Thank you again. The Phasmid. I need to tell Lena about this ASAP. Who is Lena? A cryptozoologist, she lives in Jamrock, on the Tabernacle Road. She told me about this phasmid. Tabernacle? It's on the way over. It's on the way over, near where you live. On perdition. She looks at Vikamir. Fine, if I'm going to drop you off anyway. She and her husband were conducting the search for the phasmid. It's their discovery in, par in part. They should know as soon as possible. It would do you good to deliver some positive news for a change. She is going to be over the moon. Watch out, she faint. Lieutenant Kitsuragi, what will you do now? Well, first I'll go back to my station and write the most detailed report anyone has ever seen. It will be... It will have to be good to cover all of this. Then I'll arrive... We'll have a serious talk with my captain about what? He pulls up his collar and looks around. The cold spring light reflected in the lenses of his glasses. Detective, we just stopped a small-scale war. Something is happening in Revachol. I don't know what yet but it's going to be a hard spring for the RCM. We need to get ready. Infiltrate. Investigate. Want to do that at Station 41? Talk to Captain Price? I'd rather not ruffle the feathers of two captains with my doom mongering. No, I meant investigate. Come work in 41. Work with Price? A crooked smile quivers on his lips. I'm flattered, but I don't know if I... would fit in. I'm crazy enough? Can take the stress? He doesn't know how to finish the sentence. This truly came as a surprise to him. Not a bad one, but he's at a loss. Flattened. Your Lieutenant Kitsuragi, we would be flattered if you would even consider. This man turns very serious all of a sudden. I would have to tie things up in grief first, but I mean, whatever is coming, Jamrock will be more central to it than the harbour. And we also have a huge case, Lord Lieutenant, she says with a smile. Piles that we need to get back to, mountains even. I do like the sound of that, he returns her smile. He re is really considering. Excellent, come on mate, come and work with me, the tag team, the boys from the hood, me and you, the Robocops and Terminators. I'm ready. Good, she looks at you. Then Vikamir. Fuck it, let's go, the man points down the street. Trant brought his motor carriage, it's a 20 minute drive to Jamrock. Under the evening sky, the great district district turns on its lights. A chessboard of wooden houses, 80,000 living souls inside. Fire traps as far as the eye can see from Main Street, Street to Precinct 41, atop the motorway to Boogie Street, forking into the dark horizon. You close your eyes and hear the dog bark. A lone woman sits by a factory window dreaming of meteorite strikes. On Rue de Saint Jerome, a square bullet slides into an antique shaped chamber in Old South. A man without eyelids smiles. Spring has come. It's time. Portion. Yes. McLean. Yes. Heidelstam. No. Vicamir. Yes. Du Bois. Of course. Really? Nick's gut lib looks up from the list. I hear he's quite unstable. You say that like it's a bad thing, Captain. Ptolemy Price points his pen at the doctor. It's dim in his office, and the curtains are drawn. Harry's our man. He'll pull through. And when he does... He'll side with Revachol. Understood. Got Leb returns to the list. 
Manoir, of course. Wonderful, the woman looks north. Then, can we please just go back to Jamrock now? And that's it. Is that it? Bloody hell. That was fucking incredible. What a game. Ah, oh, damn. I know what it is. I'm so excited for the next game. I hope, I please hope, fingers crossed, we get to play as Harry and Kitsuragi in Jamrock in the next game. It's what I want. Just, I can't, I can't explain how fucking awesome this game is. It was a an emotional roller coaster, and it was funny as fuck. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, though. I need to give my voice a rest after this. It's the most talking I've ever done in life itself. Fucking hell. Every one of the people that worked on this game deserves a, a high five, aces high, and a reach around. <laughs> That's what they need. That's what they deserve. Oh my days. Yeah, I just, I love the camaraderie between you and Kim. Kim's such a bro. Like, he's got your back all the time. And we solved so many cases. But the one thing is, right, at the end there, because we had the proof of the phasmid and they were like blown away by it, but yet they didn't want to know about the 2mm hole. So hopefully in the next game we get to explore the pale and the impending apocalypse. If that is really a thing. And do you know what it is? I really believe it is a thing. I think it is happening. And I don't think this game is set on. On what we know as Earth. I think this is a different. A different dimension. Or a different planet. Or. It's something. It's it's not the world that we. As we know of now. It's, it's something different. I wonder if there's going to be a scene after the credits. That's what I'm hanging on for. Now, uh, there's, because there's a few things that like, they're not necessarily loose ends, but well, they are loose ends. Because Ruby and Clastia escaped, I'm thinking, I wonder if in a different game or maybe even a small DLC or something, you could possibly play as Clastia because she is kind of the, the corporate sabotage and espionage thing. I think that would be a cool little take on this, on this game. Where you're doing that instead of being a police detective. Your your goal is to sabotage companies and, and and things like that. Could be interesting. Studio Zam. Z-A-U-M. Mankind be vigilant. We love you. Fucking incredible. And that's it. So that's it. No, we're not treated with any any little summary or anything, but doesn't matter. That is that is a, that is that's great. Phenomenal. Right lads. Well I hope you've enjoyed my Disco Elysium playthrough. It's been it's been emotional, baby. Look forward to seeing you seeing you in another game. See you there, lads. <laughs>